and we are sitting here with our guest for the day, Miss Sandy Patty, and of course, Natalie Grant. So glad to have you guys. And I know there's no doubt we've already, uh, not only are you friends, but I know you guys are fans of each other. <laughs> so just go off that, Natalie, Sandy, both go ahead, fawn over I'm each starting. other. Okay. <laughs> Every interview I do. So do you have a favorite singer? Yep, Natalie Grant. Anyone else? Not really. That's always my answer. You know that you know, it's I know, true. but you don't understand, like, even sitting here hearing that, I'll either burst into tears or I just kind of go blank because <laughs> the fact, like, if I try to rewind to any of my earlier mm -hmm. self and I'm like, if you ever would have told me that Sandy Patty would have been saying <laughs> that I am her favorite singer, it's like the whole world stands still for a moment because that's just, I don't know, that's one of those life moments that you just think, wow, and say it again so I can get a recording and then print it. Yeah, I'm going to put it everywhere. I'm going to put it everywhere. It. And I'm like, there was a time, because like my kids are still young, and I realized that I'm going to outgrow being cool at all by the time they even care. And I'd be like, no, but there was a time I was cool. Yeah, Sandy Patty said, I'm still very clear. Yeah, that's right. It all goes back to because Sandy Patty said, yeah. well, What's fun is that vinyl's coming back now. Yes. My kids like oh, yeah. you are. You're vinyl. awesome. You're yeah. amazing. I, like the first I have years. those on vinyl. That's how you know. First time around, people. Um, and I think for me, uh, having a big sister that um this is one of the things that's so remarkable about you, I think, for me, is you just reach out out of the blue for mm -hmm. no reason, not looking for anything. And just encourage and build up. That is somebody that's very comfortable in their own skin and someone who is very secure. Is someone who constantly gives the praise to somebody else and encourages somebody else. That is who you are to me. And I just think about how incredible that is. I, I oftentimes you have no idea, but I'm like sitting at a lunch with people and they'll text me and be like, I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of a big deal, Sandy Patch. <laughs> Like it was nothing. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I think of, I, you know, I, I follow you on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm like a stalker crazy person, <laughs> but I remember the days of having three, you know, yeah. kids. And you might have posted something, everybody's throwing up, and I've got to get on the bus, and I just don't know what my life is about. And, <laughs> and I quit, you know. And it's, I, I think it's in those moments, I just kind of want you to know, I see you. Yeah. I love you, just, you know, <laughs> hugs, and you and Bernie, you do so many things right as parents, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, I think your kids know, you choose them, mm -hmm. you totally mm -hmm. choose them, and, you know, to me, that's what's eternal, mm -hmm. that's the eternal stuff, yeah, you can sing, and when you and Bernie can get on the road together, mm -hmm. that's cool, too, but it's the, it's driving all night, or flying all night to get home for you know, the, per the speeches, yes. that kind of stuff. You know, it's yes. like, yeah, that's eternal stuff. And it's hard when they're young and there's a demand on mm -hmm. you as a performer and an entertainer mm -hmm. and an entrepreneur and a spokesperson and all of that. And at the end of the day, your kids know they cho that you choose them. They totally, Your encouragement always comes at totally the right time. Know that. <laughs> Is that, I mean, you know, I hear a lot of personal influence. I was going to ask you already about Sandy's musical influence on you. And you can talk about that. I'd love to hear some of those specifics. But obviously there's this personal influence to it. As a mother and someone who has walked these roads, what do you feel like some of the most impactful through y'all's relationship takeaways have been and influence has been because of Sandy's presence in your life? Well, I think that it's just that encouraging word from someone who actually has walked that road and has done it with grace, even in the hardships. Um, I think that that's when you really learn who somebody is. And, uh, you know, now knowing Sandy not only as a singer, but as a speaker and an author, reading her book and knowing her story and still seeing the grace with which she's handled her life. I just think, oh my gosh, <laughs> such so much to aspire to. But also, when you hear those words of affirmation and those words of encouragement, it just seems to mean a little bit more from someone whose feet have been held mm -hmm. to the fire themselves and um, has come through shining. You know, it just means a lot. <laughs> well, what does that mean to you to hear that? You know, to, mm -hmm. could you imagine 20 years ago, 30 years ago, could you imagine? being able to finally be in a place to be able to speak in. Yeah, that's a really, no. And I think I do that for 
for people because I wish I had had that mm -hmm. for me. Um, I didn't seek it. So, you know, a lot of that is yeah. on me. But I think I do that because I just wish that I would have had somebody that I could have gone to at 2 a.m. and go, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I, you know, yeah. this or that. Mm -hmm. um, because it, the road is hard. Mm -hmm. What we do on the road is very real. Yeah. But it is not the real world. Yeah. And so perspectives and what is going to count and not count, whether it's food or relationships or whatever it is, <laughs> you've got to, you know, you've got to figure that out. And the I figured a lot of those things out a little too late, you know? <laughs> and so when you and Bernie go on date night and you invest in that, it's mm -hmm. like, I'll send you two thumbs up <laughs> just because, <laughs> you know what? In that, it does matter. Yes. It does it matter. Does. It doesn't just happen automatically. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the road, things look different and you know you gotta stay grounded and I just want to be a voice in your life to go yep good job <laughs> it matters <laughs> you know and I think that's so important because how sometimes perception of you two guys I think uh, you ladies sitting here side by side is really poignant because you have these generations of vocalists of wonderful performers there is a respect for what you do the excellence in what you do we've been talking about this all day long there's a respect for that but then to know that, hey, we're not just, you know, we're, we're not just ponies on parade. <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we are not just singers. But in, in even going deeper than that, we're not just singers. Yes, we're real people. But we're singers who actually have something to say. The reason that we have honed our gifts, the reason that we then present these in this way, is because we have something to say that means something. Like you said, what we do is real. It may not be all real life, but it is real. Yep. I'd love to hear from you all about, uh, well, one, is that true? I think we've seen it. But is it true? And then how is that true? And how have you really used the medium of music to say something? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think I I did one record where I felt like I was um, trying to be something that other people envisioned me to be. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work, and I felt a complete disconnect from my audience. And so I'm, I'm grateful that, number one, I actually didn't start young. I was a late bloomer, and I think that's a big difference mm -hmm. uh, between just a lot of singers that start. I mean, I was in my late 20s before I even had a project come out at all. Mm -hmm. I was in my mid-30s before I even had a project that was successful. <laughs> um, and so I think that with that comes maturity, um, but also the ability to say, well, no, actually, this isn't who I want to be. And I'm grateful that I had the guts to say that mm -hmm. early on and figure out that I wanted to write my own music. I wanted to be real and transparent and authentic and honest, even if it meant people didn't see the best sides of me all the time. Mm. And so I feel like saying that through my music, you, what I set out and who I set out to be as a person, I think is evident in my music. Mm -hmm. And I think that when people are attracted to the music, they might be attracted to the voice at first, but what I've noticed through mm -hmm. the years is that they're really just they're more attracted to the message mm -hmm. than the voice. Maybe it's the voice that's delivering the message, but mm -hmm. once they get past all that, it's mm -hmm. really the message. Mm -hmm. that I think that's to. really well said. And I think your generation <clears throat> has had more freedom to mm -hmm. be very real about life totally. stuff in your songs. Yep. And that maybe a song doesn't have, you know, the typical Christian lyrics. But it's about real life, and mm -hmm. it's about how do I stay a follower of Jesus mm -hmm. in this moment when my kids are this or that, or my marriage this or that, or my parents have all, you know, this or that. How, you know, and, and I just, I love that you guys, your generation, is able to do that. I was a really kind of a shy kid. Mm -hmm. Words were awkward for me. So in just so many ways, music was my voice. Yes. And um, I would hear a song and I would think either that's how I feel or that's how I want to feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would learn a song to say that, you know, one comes to mind, you know, the, the one from Sound of Music, I've got confidence in some, and I just remember thinking, I wonder what that feels like mm -hmm. to really have confidence. So I would learn that to just pretend I had confidence. and. So music for me has always been kind of what you said, sort of an extension of my heart. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. this is what I'm learning. 
this is what I'm processing. So that's going to come out in my music for sure. Mm -hmm. I think people also, we talk about vocalists, they, we have to ask, since you're both here, about taking care of vocals. There are a lot of people who will be, you know, watching or reading or listening that uh, are musicians. And so I know I've heard you speak on some of the sacrifice and the cost. So we've talked about emotional sacrifices and mental sacrifices, but there are actual tangible mm -hmm. uh, things that are, have to be sacrificed to keep the instrument, which then allows the message, right? So it's all going back it's, to communicating the message. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's funny because I'll get the question, what are you looking forward to most in retirement? Right. <laughs> and, and you will so get this. One of the things, it's so weird, is just not having every waking moment thinking, is this going to help my voice or hurt my voice? Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Laughing at a movie. Absolutely. Going to a sports, you know, I've had to just, you know, like sometimes I'm that mom on the stands, you know, that's going, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> right? That's, that's what you're like, yes, voice. exactly. Just those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. and Well, and, you know, we're so <clears throat> different in that way because she studied and truly is actually more legit. <laughs> than I am and I think it's so funny when I think about it because um truly I can say um I never had any training and so but for here's, a lot of you people, know what I've like, heard you say that but here's what I'm gonna say about that yes I think because your dad mm -hmm. was such a a good singer and musician yeah I think you had a lot more training than you realized mm -hmm. just because sure. You would listen to him and mm -hmm. probably in some talked about breathing. And, yes. Well, there's you know. some natural things that, yep. you know, came as a result of just constantly doing it and right. the muscle, you know, but what's funny is I always, when people ask me that, so what are your, mm -hmm. and I say, well, um, I didn't really train, but um, though I do think I have a bit of a vocal cord of steel kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. I, I do. It's just I don't. I it's don't all, really know. It's also you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you. I don't really know all that, but um, but I did rupture a vocal cord, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when that happened, that was when I was like, oh, so you you really do have to actually be smarter than mm -hmm. just taking the gift of God for granted. You can always just say, well, it's just. God just gave me the gift, you know, mm -hmm. but he also gave you a brain mm -hmm. and expects you to take care and nurture the gift mm -hmm. that he gave you. And I remember being so convicted about the fact that I'd always kind of flippantly said, well, mm -hmm. God just gave me the gift mm -hmm. and kind of like, oh, I didn't, you know, and sometimes I can even be a little bit of false humility, transparently, you know, oh, I didn't ever train. It's mm -hmm. just God gave me the gift. Mm -hmm. Blah. Well, I should have been a little smarter about mm -hmm. how I took care of it. And so now. Yes, I think mm -hmm. about everything I do. I wake up every morning, I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> another day. Still there. Still have <laughs> well, you know what? There is there is being a good steward yes. of that gift. Yes. And we were talking earlier, just in the teaching, I'm doing some teaching now, and which is so fun, about awesome. the historical perspective of worship. And, mm -hmm. you know, the priests who took care of the tabernacle and the temple, I love that we, we overlook the fact that the iron workers, the people who worked, the woodworkers, the musicians were chosen yes. because they were skilled yes. and trained. Mm -hmm. And I, I think sometimes we think if God calls us, yes. we just kind of do that. But being skilled and trained yes. is also part, part of, of it. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, do you have like a warm up now that you do? I do. I work with someone here in Nashville locally who's fantastic, and I've even taken her on tour. It's funny, like. Some of the things you think are luxuries. She has the tea. Voice tea. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the best. Mm -hmm. And um, I realize now that it's not a luxury to have somebody who takes care of my voice on tour with me. It's actually a necessity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's, I'm going to go on a long tour, because as you know, mm -hmm. the older you get, those long tours are like five shows a week. No. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not even possible. Well, not even possible. The actual two hours might feel the same to the audience for me. The wind up and oh. the wind down oh, yeah, is very absolutely. different. Absolutely. I just want to go in a. I just want to soak in an <laughs> ice bath afterwards. <laughs> yes. To wrap up, you know, when all is said and done, this is for both of you. When all is said and done, more than a singer, what is it that you want to be remembered as? I'll. I. I'll go. You want me to go? Yes. I'll go first because I. 
I've probably gotten this question more than you <laughs> at this point. And honestly, if it could be this simple, it would be, this is a woman who loved her Lord fiercely, who loved her family passionately. And when she had a chance, she sang about it. I love that. If it could be that simple, yes. mm -hmm. that would be my prayer. I love that. And it's very similar. Um, there's a song, a Richard Smallwood song that Whitney Houston covered on the Preacher's Wife soundtrack. <laughs> and I love singing it. It's called I Love the Lord. And I just think that that <laughs> statement, that's it. That she loved the Lord. Because if you truly mm -hmm. love the Lord, you'll love people. You'll mm -hmm. love your husband. You'll love your kids. Mm -hmm. um, you'll, be, you'll be kind. All of the things that you once said about you will follow mm -hmm. if you truly love the Lord. And I think I just want people to say, man, she loves Jesus. Mm -hmm. She really did.